Welcome back to Kimchi Rednecks. We are in the kitchen. But we're not cooking. To show you stuff. And things. Right. Now, what stuff are we here to show you? Ask her. She knows what we're doing. <laughs> so we've been asked by a couple different people who watch our videos about what are the basic Korean pantry staples that you should have in your kitchen. So while we're doing that, we're first going to just go ahead and address the elephant in the room. You may not have noticed, but we white. I real white. I even got white girl level spice. Now, we live in Korea, and we buy our stuff in Korea. And when we cook Korean things, we're showing you the way we've been shown how to cook it. So, that's what we got. Now, if you got a friend, a cousin, uh, how many, abuji, omami, emo, anybody, anybody who has a better source of knowledge that can tell you that something's wrong or rock on with your bad self. Yeah, we don't have anybody to give us that firsthand knowledge. So everything that we have learned has been from Mainly through trial and error. Research and trial and error. So we have researched a lot. We've well, tried a lot. We do have a few friends that have pointed us at a few things along the way, but but the majority of the the majority of our friend would be Mong Chi then. Well, Cause, yeah. Because the other person that that was pointing me along the way was also white. She also pointed me to Mong Chi. But yeah. We so, have occasionally shown up in the grocery store with a pitcher or something and asked the, la the lady stocking aisle, look at this. Yeah, and they just smile and go, go. <laughs> They're very nice about that. Yeah, so we are not trying to appropriate the Korean culture. We love the Korean culture. We love the Korean people, but we are not trying to appropriate it. It is not our culture. We love it. We appreciate it. We want to share it with other people, but we don't want to take it from the Korean people. It is totally Korean. We are totally white. Yes. Yes. Just for, you know, the Karens that go burr on the internet. Yeah. So we wanted to get that out of the way before we even talked about anything. So since we're talking Korean kitchen pantry staples, there are a couple things we're not going to bring into it that we kind of consider normal pantry staples because they're normal for us. Like salt, black pepper, you should have those already. Sugar, some type of oil, whether it be vegetable or canola oil, also probably already in your kitchen. Rice. You're cooking Korean food, rice. <laughs> rice should be available. And onions, garlic, and ginger, we consider those staples in our kitchen. Maybe you don't, but those we will not address. There are many ways to get your garlic. You can get it minced, you can get it fresh, you can get it you can in get a powder, it. you can get, however you can, you're gonna get it. You can get it in a kilogram bag <laughs> around here if you want. Typically we use ours minced, pre-minced because- It's easier. We're all for it. a cheat. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for making stuff easier. So. We also are not going to discuss with you perishables, like green onions. But we will discuss that you can get freeze-dried green onions, and you also can get frozen green onions. So if, if you need an actual cheat for green onions... If you're so lazy you can't chop green onions... Korea has that for you. They got you. you covered. So outside of green onions, other perishables you may find in your recipes are going to be like potatoes, the radishes... We're not gonna discuss any of those with you. We're simply talking your seasonings and what's going into your flavors. That is where we're going with our pantry staples for today. So our first thing we're gonna talk about is one that most people are probably really familiar with. It's gonna be your soy sauce, or as Koreans call it, ganjang. So most people are probably familiar with uh, kikkoman. Kikkoman's pretty, pretty standard you states. You can probably find that in most places in the states. So you're probably very familiar with that. However, there are two main Korean ones and from what I've learned from most of the places that I've researched, if you're going to cook Korean food, you should use Korean soy sauce. There is a difference in flavor between Korean soy sauce, Japanese soy sauce, and like just generic international like store brand soy sauce. And there are actually different types of soy sauce, which I've learned as I delved into that today. So one thing that you should know is the two main Korean brands are Simpio and Chungjung One. This is Yanjo Ganjang. And the reason why this is different is because it is naturally brewed for about six months, at least six months. That's what my numbers say here. Mm. It's a higher grade, therefore it's a more expensive soy sauce. It's uh, expensive. Simpio 501 or 701, from what I understand, they have the better rating. So they're the higher ones, they're the more expensive ones. Then you have what they call Jin Ganjang, which is your less expensive, a little bit cheaper, still good, but it is made by mixing some of the some of the good stuff some of the good stuff with the acid hydrolyzed uh, soy sauce. 
So it's mixed with, with something, that's, something that's a little more chemically derived versus this, which makes it a little bit, a little bit less. So from everything I've read, Symbio 501 is, is the shit. <laughs> this is the one to get. Apparently, I didn't know that when I bought the big bottle originally, so I knew Symbio was good. I just didn't know 501 well, was the way to go. We may also try 701. The, most people will tell you that you cannot tell the difference between the Jin Ganjong and the Yanjo Ganjong unless you are really, really in, in on tune your with your soy sauce flavors. So then if you want to go even further into soy sauce, we have Guk Ganjong. What's Guk Ganjong, Chuck? Come on, soy that sauce. That one's the soup soy sauce. There right? you yeah. go. I was like, you know Guk. <laughs> So this is a soy sauce that is specifically made for using with your soups and your stews. It is lighter in color and it has a higher salt content. So it's gonna taste a lot saltier. So if you use this instead of a regular soy sauce in something, you're going to wanna reduce your salt a little bit. <laughs> Considering the saltiness of normal soy sauce, that's saying something. So this also adds, it kind of bumps up the umami flavor. Umami. Umami is good. All right, Chuck. Next, we've got Denjong. 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 <laughs> so, Denjong is generically just a soybean paste, similar to miso from Japan, except this tends to be a little more earthy. thicker and a little more earthy. Miso tends to be a little more light flavored. Also, a little bit more salty than miso. A little more salty. This makes uh, this makes a good stew. Yes. Miso makes a good soup. So. With the denjong, you'll often find that in a lot of stews. You may not find it as often in other things, but it is also used with marinating meat, except you should note if you're marinating meat in this, you need to pay attention to how long you marinate because it is a very earthy, very strong, kick you in the face flavor. Mm, if it, you marinate too long. It, it will kick you if you marinate too long. All right, next. Next is a staple of Korean food, gochujang. Gochujang is a red pepper paste, cayenne pepper, or the Korean version of cayenne pepper specifically. This is the stuff that you add a spoonful into your soup and then it's too hot. So it's savory, it's spicy, it's also a little bit sweet. And the pepper is very different from what we're used to in the Western world. So it's not the same as that chili pepper in the Western world. Then you're going to find the gochugaru, which we're going to be needing to buy some soon. Which is the, <laughs> the same pepper as that, except it's dried and crushed instead of turned into a paste. You can get the coarse ground one. This is a little more coarse ground, which is what I typically use. And I believe there's also a finer ground one. There's also an, an extra spicy one. I'm probably not buying the extra spicy one. <laughs> so uh, they are, they have a more longer lasting heat than your Western chili peppers do. So, and this also has a little bit of sweetness to it. Same, same pepper. Next up on the list of things you should probably have is changirum sesame or oil. sesame oil. This one we have comes in a little tin, which is just kind of funny because I'm the country from the country, and it reminds me of old oil cans that you had to pop open and and pour in your car. You do not pour this in your car. No. Yeah, that will be a bad day. So your sesame oil is going to give you a little bit more of a nutty aroma. It's going to be even more of savory flavor to your dishes. A lot of times you'll find they add that in at the end of dishes. A lot of times it, it actually gets used as a garnish. They'll put a little on top of something or like in the last minutes of cooking something, they'll splash a little in. You do not fry in that. It no. will burn. It will <laughs> smoke. Your whole house will, will smell very like... Very bad idea. Very, very bad, bad idea. idea. All right. So next we've got... Sao Sing Cho, which is rice vinegar. This happens to be a brown rice vinegar here. So your rice vinegar is typically used to help balance a flavor, to balance out your oily or your... And that one is Otogi brand. <laughs> your oily or your greasy flavors. It's going to help bring those down. It's also going to add some acidity to whatever dish you're making, and it's going to cleanse your palate. So rice vinegar is always a good one to have. And they do make several different types of vinegar. There's like an apple. They have their own apple vinegar. There's rice vinegar. vinegar. There's a lot of vinegar. The vinegar aisle can be a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, you've probably seen this in some things. In Japanese, it's called mirin. In Korean, it's called matsu. It is sweet rice cooking wine. Don't drink it, just cook with it. So it does add sweet notes to whatever you're cooking. 
and it does also reduce the gamey and fishy kind of smells or kind of taste that you might get from some meats. But the important thing to note is this is not soju, it is not sake. And it is also not rice vinegar. So do not use it in place of rice vinegar. Do not use it in place of sake or soju and expect it to be the exact same thing. It is not. No. Very important to note. Not gonna work. We've got Meshel. This is the Otogi brand. I don't know who this brand is, but I, this one I bought special because I had actually had some really good feedback that this was a really good brand. Mm, okay. So a little bit more expensive of a brand. But this is Meshel Chong, which is a plum extract or syrup. It is actually not a traditional item used in Korean cooking, which kind of surprised me. It has been used more recently as an alternative to using sugar. Right, yes. So one thing you at, won't notice over here is we don't- At least when you're cooking. Yeah, so when you're cooking and maybe it calls for sugar, this has been replacing that, or you can replace it with honey. There are also other syrups, there's a rice syrup. There's many different syrups that they mm. do use. However, I'm very fond of the plum extract syrup. It is harder to find outside of Korea, so if you're not in Korea, sorry about your luck. There, there are some specialty websites where you can order stuff from. If we can remember to look it up, we'll put a link below. Or maybe just try an Asian uh, market. An, who, who an, might an have actual it Asian or Korean market, yeah. like H Mart or something, might might work. So it does have a sweeter and mildly tangy taste. It softens, so it's going to help to it's for your meat. It's instead of keeping your meat tough, it's going to help and break down that a little bit, so it's a little bit softer over meat. And it also helps to remove some of that gamey and fishy smells from your meat as well and the taste. So Meshel is like my, I love Meshel. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. We use it a lot. Yep. All right, next up we have toasted sesame seeds. These actually say roasted and check, check out our brand. No brand. <laughs> it has no brand. No brand is a brand here in Korea. <laughs> I do actually buy things from no brand. I like them. No brand actually makes pretty good stuff. That's the E-Mart brand. So, yeah, even if you get them untoasted or unroasted, you can just roast them in a pan. You can but do it yourself. Top it over some stuff, gives you a nice little crunch to it, a little nutty flavor. So most of the time you'll see those as a finisher to a dish, which is a perfect finisher to a yeah, dish. Yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff, especially if you're watching internet videos, you'll see them a little sprinkle of sesame seeds, a little slicing green onion. Green onion. There you go. All right, so next we've got what they refer to as ak jot. Jot is usually like a salted, fermented, fishy kind of flavor. Mm. We don't do a whole, whole lot of seafood in this house because he's allergic. And it doesn't do well with me. It doesn't do well with him. However, using a little bit of this in our dishes, we can use. So this sure. is actually a Korean fermented fish sauce. So there are some recipes that you can't get away from the fact that you need some of it for flavor. Just like there's a Korean base broth that gets used in almost every major dish. Which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Which fortunately can be substituted for most cases, but sometimes you gotta have the original. So this is actually directly from anchovies, this one is. It brings in your umami, that richness, that flavor. So you will often find some people will try and swap out their soy sauce for it because it can be used in place of that. I typically will use it if we need a little bit of a like if I'm replacing our normal broth <laughs> with the, that Korean ultimate stock, if I'm not using that, I'm using a veggie broth or I'm using a chicken or a beef broth, I may add a little of this in there to keep a little bit of the anchovy flavor in, but not to overwhelm Chuck with that because I don't want him to get sick. It's usually not very pleasant. No. I also don't really tolerate seafood extremely well, so we just try to maneuver around the seafood world, which is, you know. Try to sidestep it a little bit yeah, here and there. Yeah, do what you can. When you go out to eat, you can't always avoid it. So there are times where we do have soups or stews that probably have some of it in it, but typically it's if I go, Typically if I go out, I like to have sundubu jjigae, the tofu stew on occasion. Most restaurants serve it with a couple of clams in it. Yeah. As long as I don't eat the clams, I'm generally all right, but it, it adds a specific flavor to the dish that has to be there. Otherwise it just tastes weird. All right, so next up we have, well, we don't have a bag of it. We'll put a picture up here somewhere. I have a picture of it. <laughs> but we have MSG, 
what is MSG? And Uncle Roger wants to say MSG is king, king of, of flavor. flavor. It's better version of salt. MSG is salt on crack. This is well known on the internet as the king of flavor. Thank you, Uncle Roger. Mm. <laughs> So this stuff is not necessarily a salt replacement, although some people try to use it as that. You can use it in place of extra salt when it's called for. You can actually use it as a salt replacement. You just use less of it. Well, it's actually yeah. a third of the sodium that you would find in regular salt. Right. So this is actually made from seaweed, or at least originally it was. The chemical compound for it comes so from kombu. I think some of that has changed because some of what I was reading was talking about other options as well, like beets and stuff like that. Well, so. like I said, the original compound for it was harvested from kombu, which is seaweed that you can eat. But it does give to. it does help add your umami, and you know everybody likes the umami. Right. right. That's that little thing that you, you you throw in at the last minute to get that little extra burst of everything. And, and let's go ahead and talk about the fact that MSG has gotten a bad rep for a very long time, but if you read up on basically how that came about, there was a doctor who went over to China and he ate at a bunch of Chinese restaurants and he wrote this paper how he wasn't sure if it was MSG or one other thing and then somebody held on to the MSG and was like, MSG is killing everyone. So then it became the Chinese restaurant syndrome thing. Yeah, as everybody talks about, oh, it gives me headaches. Which... So the truth is if too much of it, yes, could give you a headache. And yes, you could actually be sensitive to MSG and it could cause headaches. But for the majority of people, this is actually better than salt. Your body actually has some of it in your body yeah. anyways. So. And you use less of it anyway. I so mean, for those of you out there who are going, oh my God, they use MSG. Yes, we do. We love it. So there. Deal with it. Okay. So the last thing we're going to talk about is the ultimate Korean soup stock. I will put a link to two different recipes that I like to use to make that if I'm going to make it. I often don't make it because it requires dried anchovies. Blech. And dashima or kombu, which is kelp. Which is the aforementioned seaweed. Yeah. So the lazy method is this, which oh, is a also a big ass Korean radish. Yeah. Which she doesn't particularly care for. The lazy method is using this packet here and sticking it in, I think it's about two cups of water or something. I think that's about how much this one makes for each packet. It's tea bags, basically. It stinks up your kitchen. I'm not going to lie to you and pretend to you that it doesn't. So if you are very sensitive to the smell of anchovies and fish and it is overwhelming to you, you do not want to use this. You do not want to make that fish stock because we've at least made not, it. At least not inside. We've made it from scratch before our friend Amy's came over and made it with us. And it is very strong. It's a very strong scent. However, if you're wanting the most authentic Korean soup stock, you're going to want to make something similar to this. Like I said, I'll link the, those in there. But if you have an issue, like we do clearly with the seafood, because the smell of it, the smell of it and potentially the taste of so it, if to, it's overwhelming, could be too much for him. To be fair, if you ever tried to make this stuff and the smell gets to you and you're like, oh my God, this smells, you know, way too strong. The broth it produces does not, not as taste as strong as it smells it when it, while it's It smells cooking. really strong. But you can interchange other stock. I have used vegetable stock very regularly without adding anything else to it. Just the vegetable stock has worked. We've used chicken stock, we've used beef stock. You can pretty much use another stock if that's what you need to do to make it work for you. Veggie stock seems to work the best as a replacement in most cases. Veggie seems to be the best and I think it's because a lot of it is veggie except for that actual fish there. Yeah. So, so there, there is what we consider from our study and our research and from our use, as you can tell, some of this actually came out of my cabinet. Some of it, I actually had new bottles because I'm about to replace them. And some of them I bought replacements for and haven't started yet. <laughs> so this is stuff we actually use on the regular to cook stuff. So. And not for, just for you, for us. Yeah, for us. So this is what we consider our Korean pantry staples. So if you're going to be cooking some Korean foods, you definitely want to start adding some of this into your your pantry so that when you're ready to cook something, you have it. But there you have it. So again, we love and appreciate our Korean friends that have helped us because we have had some that have helped us along the way to either find different brands or to, you know, figure out some of the ins and out. But or to tell us just what we were looking for. Yeah. So we're grateful for that. We're also grateful for 
amazing cooks out there who've shared their experience on the internet that we've been able to, you know, Mang Chi, Sun Kyung Longest. Those are two that we've used very regularly to kind of understand a little bit more about what's going on and how to actually cook it and cook it well. Mm, so yep. we appreciate and love the Korean culture. We love the food. We obviously love Korea because we're still here. Yep. All right. So, so we will see you guys next time. Like, not, subscribe, do the internet stuff. It, it's Korea's cases are rising again. So it, no. we could be back on delivery. There, and There may be a lot of food videos coming because... Could be delivery and cooking for a little while. We don't know. But we're going to be here for you guys as long as we can doing something fun, hopefully. Or at least something. It may not be that fun. Maybe we'll just start drinking. That's a possibility. Cooking and drinking? Cooking and drinking. There you go. What do you think? We'll see you guys next time. Bye.